okay let's move on to some next uh, set of questions what other questions other questions can be the next question can be what do you mean by iso constraint we had seen a term iso constraint in uh, sketches whenever we go we were going for a sketch analysis it used to show iso constraint as a term the meaning of that is simply that your sketch is fully constrained now what does fully constrained means is that we have restricted all degree of freedom of each and every entity of my sketch as well as in simple term if i'll say the general term it can be that we know each and everything about our sketch so making our sketch is fully constrained is basically making our sketch as iso constrained the the kedia software shows fully constrained as a term called iso constrained which simply means that you know each and everything about your sketch means its dimension you can you can actually indicate the dimension the position of each and every entity of your sketch also all the degree of freedom of each and every entity of your sketch is restricted so that is your fully constrained in general term in ketia term i would call iso constrained next question can be how many dimensions are required to constrain an ellipse this is just an example there can be another way how many dimensions are required to constrain a rectangle a square it can be anything so uh, in case of ellipse as well there are two conditions we have that if my origin origin or if I, my center point of the ellipse is at origin then i will need two dimensions only the major axis and minor axis but if the center point is away from the center uh, origin or any other entity then i would need minimum four dimensions because uh, i'll need to define the position of center point from origin x axis value y axis value as well as i'll need to define the major axis minor axis so it can vary actually minimum two dimensions maximum it can be four sometimes this might happen that uh, your uh, center point of your ellipse is coincided on x axis or is coincided on y axis then in that case uh, you will need three dimensions the other respective axis with the minor axis and major axis this can be a case so uh, we cannot directly identify that how many number of uh, dimensions would be required but yes minimum it would be two the condition is that center point is coincided at origin or any other point for which we have the dimensions available or that particular point is already fully constrained so in that case if i'll create a ellipse i just need to define two dimensions major axis minor axis that's it but if uh, i'm creating it in a space then i need minimum four direct dimension major axis minor axis definitely is must along with the distance or the position with respect to origin x axis value y axis value so this is how we can uh, give the answer because whenever you represent yourself you sh you have to showcase your knowledge so when how you will be able to showcase your knowledge in this manner because if you will say two dimensions then the interviewer will ask you for uh, the explanation at that time if you are saying considering that my origin is coincided with the center point then he or she may ask you i didn't give you that condition so instead of giving the interviewer a chance to ask the question 
explain it in the proper manner that if this condition is there then it would be two dimension if this condition is there there might be chances that we need three dimensional constraint if that condition is there we might need four dimensional constraints and again because whenever you will be uh, going for an interview like this you will not be having the software available with you you will sit one to one to the person and uh, give the answers so you must have that that much level of visualization in you that when you are explaining the things it should represent that okay you are actually imagining the software available with you and you are explaining the answers to the interviewer it would give you a good uh, representation of yours to the interviewer it will reflect that yes the the candidate has deep knowledge of everything of every possible aspect while creating the ellipse i can create the ellipse at origin i can create away from origin i can create on x axis i can create on y axis so there would be number of dimensions changing as per that this is how you have to represent yourself while explaining the things to the interviewer okay let's move on to the next question the next question can be what are the different conic sections so when we were creating some conic sections when we were creating the fillets by default we were getting the circular shape but there was some option available for conic sections as well even in the profile toolbar of sketcher environment as well we had option available for conic sections so what are different conic sections we can create i can create a hyperbola i can create a ellipse i can given create the parabola similarly when we were using the fillet feature in the part design environment at that time as well the conic sections we were changing or we were varying the value from point 1 to point 9 conic parameter was the name in the edge fillet dialog box so what we were doing we were actually maintaining the value point 1 to point 9 we were defining the conic parameter or conic section hyperbola it can be for a parabola if the value was 0.5 then it was circle so that is your conic parameter we can create a conic parameter as hyperbola we can create it parabola we can even go for circle we can even go for elliptical case or ellipse these are your conic sections or which are actually being defined by means of some parameter value varies from point 1 to point 9 if the value is point 5 then it is circle what is the use of sketch analysis it's been a very very good practice for us uh, to use the sketch analysis whenever we had created the sketch whenever we had applied the dimensions or geometrical constraints on that sketch after that we had gone for sketch analysis why we had gone for a sketch analysis to check whether our sketch is fully constrained or iso constrained or not whether all the degree of freedom of each and every entity of that sketch are restricted or not i repeat sketch analysis gives us the result or the answer to the question that whether our sketch is fully or iso constrained is or not it also gives me the result for whether i have restricted all degree of freedom for each and every entity of the sketch or not so if i am unable to judge visually that my sketch is fully constrained or not sometimes it happens the sketch is showing as green but there are some entities which are not visible to me properly and i am unable to find out so at that time what i can do is 
I can go for a sketch analysis. A sketch analysis will give me the status whether my sketch is fully constrained or not, whether my sketch is ISO constrained or not. Even if I'll go for another option available in sketch analysis named as a sketch solving status, then I can check each and every entity, whether it is a point, line, circle, whatever it is, status of each and every entity that whether that particular entity, that particular point, that particular line, that particular arc is fully constrained or not with the closed loop status as well. I can check whether my sketch is fully closed loop or not. If yes, then definitely we can apply the features for converting that into solid. If not, then definitely we cannot. So I cannot accept a open loop sketch while creating the solid model, especially sketch based features. Definitely there are some specific cases where we have to accept, otherwise we never accept it. So for that, before exiting the sketcher environment, before applying any feature, after completion of sketch, we always check using sketch analysis whether our sketch is fully constrained whether our sketch is iso constrained or not also using sketch solving status option we check whether it is a closed loop or not which also gives us the result about each and every entity of my sketch whether each and every entity of that sketch is fully constrained or not so this is the use of sketch analysis. Next, sorry, can axis line be converted into object line and vice versa? So when I was explaining you the construction line at that time as well, I had discussed that axis line actually cannot be converted into object. Similarly, object line cannot be converted into axis. But object line can be converted into reference and reference line can be converted into object. So with the reference line, with the reference element, you can play vice versa. But with the axis line, definitely you cannot. This is the answer to this question that axis line cannot be converted into object line and vice versa of that is also not possible. Next question. What is the kernel of Katia? When I was explaining the kernel of Katia, I told you that this question is must. Yes, interviewer will definitely ask you. What is the kernel of Katia? So kernel of Katia is C next. C next is one of the way by which we can actually execute the software opening process as well. I'll go for Windows R, run command. I will type down C next and press enter. Yes, it will execute the command to open the software. C next is the operating system on which software is based. In the technical term, that operating system is called as kernel. So, kernel of Katia is C next. Okay. Similar to that, there can be one more question. Who is the developer of Katia? So developer of Katia is an organization named as Dazzle Systems. Dazzle Systems is the organization who is developer of Katia, who has one more CAD solution available named as SolidWorks. So, um, yes, these many things can be asked when you appear for an interview. So please do remember these things and definitely when we are covering these questions, along with that we will try to revise uh, whatever we had covered, whatever we had discussed in the complete training program.